Cam Thomas had more 40-point games this season than Kevin Durant, Ja Morant, Trey Young, Jalen Brown, and Anthony Davis, just to name a few. His four games with 40 or more points rank him 15th in the NBA, despite being given less than 17 minutes a game in a total of four starts on the season. He was also was confusingly given many DNP coaches' decisions after the All-Star break. This despite Cam becoming the youngest player in NBA history to score 40 or more points in three straight games during a stretch in early February, just before his drastic minutes cut in benchings. Speaking of total starts, his numbers when in the starting lineup are actually absurd. In four games started this season, Cam Thomas averaged 39 points, 4 rebounds, and 3 assists per game, while shooting 46% from the field and 50% from 3. He also had a 40-point game off the bench. Yet despite that, the Nets have made him a non-rotational player. If you want a little larger sample size, Thomas has played 25 or more minutes in 15 games this season. In those affairs, he's averaging over 26 points per game. There's a real argument to be had that Thomas is already the Nets' second best player at only 21 years old. Yet despite this, the Nets aren't even playing him in a lot of games. I get the playmaking could improve, and there are legitimate defensive concerns, but this guy is an absolute bucket. He has to be on the floor. I'm getting close to riding the free Cam Thomas train and trying to get him out of Brooklyn. I'll go a little less drastic first and say this. The Brooklyn Nets need to unleash Cam Thomas. He's a star in the waiting. To truly understand how good Cam Thomas has been and how high his ceiling is, let's take a look at his first two NBA seasons thus far. Before we get into the Brooklyn Nets star in waiting, if you enjoy my content and watch a few videos of mine, think about subscribing. 96% of my viewers are actually not subscribed, so if you watch me before and enjoy the content, drop a sub and comment down below. It really helps the channel. Cam Thomas was the 23rd ranked player in his high school class, and was dominant in his lone season at LSU. He put up 23 a game as a freshman in the SEC, which practically never happens. He had the second highest average of all Power 5 players. He's been a bucket for a minute now. He was viewed by many as a lottery level talent, including myself, but due to concerns about his height for a two guard and defensive ability, he slipped on draft night. He fell all the way to the Brooklyn Nets with the 27th overall pick. He was drafted to a team with James Harden and Kyrie Irving already in the backcourt, so he wasn't exactly expected to be a huge contributor right away. However, with the team already having Kevin Durant as well, it allowed Cam to learn to become an even better scorer from three of the best scorers of the past decade plus. Now let's talk about his rookie season. His stats across the year as a whole likely won't wow you. He was given 18 minutes per game and in those minutes he averaged 8.5 points, 2.4 rebounds, and 1.2 assists. However, despite this relatively limited opportunity, he still managed to have 10 games with 20 or more points in his rookie season, all of them coming after the calendar turned to 2022. His season high came on February 4th against the Jazz, where he dropped 30 points in 31 minutes. The dealing of James Harden at the deadline allowed some more opportunity for Thomas, and he showed a ton of scoring upside down the stretch. He had a quick trigger, but was clearly a bucket getter nonetheless. Now let's get into this year as a whole, although it doesn't nearly tell the full story. For the year, he's been getting 17 minutes per game, and has put up 11 points, 2 rebounds, and 2 assists per game. The minutes have gone down from his rookie season, but his numbers have improved nonetheless. The Nets decided to break it down and go towards a rebuild at the 23 deadline, moving both Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. It seemed as if Thomas was about to be handed the keys to the offense, but that just hasn't happened. Now let's talk about the dominance that Cam has shown in stretches. Many thought Thomas would be handed the keys because of a three-game stretch that occurred when Kyrie and KD were out in early February. It started on February 4th against the Wizards. Thomas came off the bench for Brooklyn, but he didn't need to start to make a statement. He dropped 44 points in just 29 minutes, and shot 70% from the field and 80% from three. He was unstoppable, and completely dominated. 
It was one of the best performances of the season to that point, but many that were unaware of Thomas thought it was kind of a flash in the pan, one-off performance. Yet he proceeded to do it again against the Clippers two days later. This time he started, and even played 39 minutes. But in that time, he proceeded to drop 47 points, hitting 7 threes in the process. He did this against Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, two of the best perimeter defenders in the league. By this point, people nationwide were starting to take notice. But of course, everyone doubted he could do it again, yet he did, just one day later against the Suns. This time he finished with 44 points, and was starting to get a star's whistle, as he finished with 18 made free throws on 20 attempts. He became the youngest player in NBA history to have three straight 40-point games. This was no fluke, random players can't do this, it's only done by stars. He buckled against the pressure a little bit in the team's next game, scoring zero points in the first half against the Bulls. Yet he bounced back and had a 20 point second half, showing that he was indeed still a bucket. This is where we can get into conspiracy if we want though. In a post game interview after this game against the Bulls, Cam Thomas was asked a question about his teammates attractiveness, and at the end of his response he said no homo, to signal that what he had responded wasn't meant in a gay manner. This clip went viral on social media and news outlets were claiming he had said an anti-gay slur, which is just blatantly not true, and the league hit him with a fine for the comments, which is completely unjust if you ask me. And just like that, after dominating in 7 out of his last 8 halves of basketball, Thomas was pulled from the starting lineup, and basically blackballed because of what he said. Between this game and the final game of the season on April 9th, a whole two months, Thomas was only given 25 or more minutes in four games, and he scored 18 or more points in each of those four. He was given coaches DNPs and garbage time minutes exclusively. It was some of the weirdest coaching I've ever seen. He's the young star of your franchise and had just had one of, if not the best three or four game sequences by any player all season and they immediately benched him. It's unjustifiable, yet this wasn't the end. The Nets clinched the sixth spot in the playoffs before the season came to an end, meaning that Game 82 was one that didn't hold a lot of stakes for them. Due to this, the team rested many key players. This gave Cam Thomas the start once again, for the first time in two months, and he just proved how great he was yet again. He dropped 46 points on 55% from the field and 75% from 3. Sure, it was practically against Philly's B team, but you're not scoring 40 plus unless you're a special talent, especially 4 times in one season. He basically spat in the face of the coaching staff and made it obvious to everyone watching how stupid the team was for not playing him. I get the defensive and shot selection concerns, I do but they simply do not justify benching a player as gifted at putting the ball through the basket as Thomas is. I mean hell, Trey Young has worse defensive concerns and sometimes worse shot selection, yet he's given the keys to the Hawks franchise. There's many other examples as well. You ignore the other concerns when a player is as gifted offensively as Cam Thomas is, you just do. With his performance on Sunday, he finished the 2023 season with an average of 39 points per game as a starter. It's ridiculous. There's a strong argument to be had that Thomas is just as gifted as a player like Jalen Green, who I've supported, but he was in the same draft class and Thomas might even perform better if afforded the same opportunity as Green. He's one of the most talented bucket getters this early on that I've seen in a long time. I'm not going to disrespect Mikael Bridges here. He's been phenomenal since getting dealt to Brooklyn, and he's also a great defender. He's the Nets' best player right now, but I legitimately don't think there's a single other player on the team I'd take over Cam, especially considering he's only 21. Cam Thomas has been the most mistreated and disrespected young star this season, point blank. After putting up three straight games with 40 plus points, becoming the youngest player in NBA history to do so, the team immediately benched him. Possibly all because he said no homo in an interview. And he proved the coaches wrong once again on Sunday, dropping over 40 points again on his first start in two months. He's a star level player in the waiting, 
All he needs is minutes and opportunity. I think there's a strong case that he's the Nets' second best player, yet they treat him like he's their 12th. I get the defensive and shot selection concerns, I really do, but they simply do not justify benching a player as gifted at putting the ball through the basket as Thomas is. You ignore the other concerns when a player is as gifted offensively as Cam, you just do. The Nets need to unleash Cam Thomas, he is the future of this team, and if they won't, they better trade him because all other 29 teams would give him more opportunity. Free Cam Thomas. Thanks for watching, I'm Herm, have a good one. Lucas.